All right, I think that's a yes. All right, awesome. So uh, my name is Mike, and I uh, take care of um, you know the training and a lot of the technical side of the things uh, that we do here at Dome. And also with me in here is Jonathan. I don't know if his microphone is going to be active, but he'll be able to chat with you guys. Uh, Jonathan uh, can help out with um, uh, you know anything uh, from a sales uh, perspective if you have go if you guys want uh, going forward. And uh, the contact information is in there uh, in the later slide. So uh, I'm going to just go over this slide in like 30 seconds. Um, uh, basically, we try to set ourselves apart from other Z-Wave device manufacturers in that we try to enter uh, really directly to the uh, dealer market. Um, a lot. Of, I don't know how a lot of other Z-Wave device manufacturers work, but. The ones that I've worked with in the past, when I worked at a distributor, um, they weren't really, they didn't really care about the end uh, dealers. They only cared about, you know, end users. So um, that's kind of uh, where we try to set ourselves apart. So I'm going to leave it at that. You guys can uh, look through this slide later if you'd like. Um, so to get started, uh, you know, like um, <clears throat> Richie was saying, we have a full line of products. Um, so, uh, you know, I, we'll start out with the basic one is the door window sensor. And um, actually, before I get going, um, could you guys respond in the chat with a message on if you guys use the wave already in your uh, installations? And if you do, which controller you guys use? And uh, based on your guys' responses. I'm going to try to, you know, uh, talk about my presentations differently. Okay, so we got someone for Vera, and uh, we'll see if anybody else answers. So, uh, if you're using Vera, you should be able to use sensor uh, without a problem. Um, we, I have 150 foot range in here, but um, we've actually gotten much further than uh, 150 foot uh, with the door sensor. Uh, but you can rest assured at 100 foot uh, line of sight. Um, there's a half inch distance between the magnet and the sensor, uh, which is all right. But we have a better one uh, coming out, which is going to be a one inch distance, and it's got a few other features that really set it apart. Um, so some of the ways you can throw in a door sensor into your system, you know. Most people that I speak with use door sensors for just security, but you could really use it for a lot more, like um, uh, turning on a, a light before you walk into a room, uh, keeping track of medicine cabinets, drawers, mailboxes, or anything else. Um, or uh, we have a, a siren uh, where we can uh, you know, play a chime if uh, somebody walks into a door uh, at some point and you want to keep track of that door. So. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the table at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can if you full screen it, or uh, we can get you the, a PDF of this later where you can take a closer look at it. But this table shows uh, various features, and I have this table for all of the different uh, devices we have. And um, based on the answers, we have a lot of Omni users in the group. Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, the integration capabilities of Omni uh, listed in this table, but what we have here is different uh, controllers listed, like Wink, uh, Fabaro, Smart Things, etc., and then different features: uh, open, close notification, and then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely send the PDF over to you guys uh, once we have once we're done with this. Uh, and then over here, uh, we have uh, recognized as. Uh, which shows you how the device shows up in the system when you first um, include it. And keep in mind that these are going to change uh, because, you know, as we get integrated with uh, manufacturers, uh, they'll actually recognize it as a dome, you know, sensor instead of a generic sensor. Um, so this is really just details that you guys can uh, take a look at, um, take a look at uh, on your own later. So 
our leak sensor. Uh, our leak sensor, uh, it beeps and it sends a Z-Way notification when water is detected. And you guys give me just a second. All right. So this is what our leak sensor looks like. And there's three metal feet at the bottom. And you can place this on any surface, uh, you know, on uh, near appliances, fixtures, toilets, etc. And then water touches the two pins and it sends a signal. Uh, so this guy is battery powered, so you don't have to run any wire anywhere. And um, you can just, it, the battery lasts for three years. Um, so you don't have to really worry about that. And we also have this cradle that comes with it. You, you can place it in the cradle and there's a, a lead. The lead can be placed in difficult to reach spots like underneath appliances um, or you could even uh, dangle it inside a, a sump pump uh, and get notified um, you know, if the sump pump is about to overflow, uh, which is super key because you'll get a notification before it actually overflows. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the basic Z-Wave characteristics. Then uh, here are some other uses. Um, so uh, from I actually spoke with a couple of guys who, actually a single guy that who exclusively deal with uh, water detection uh, for um, high rises. And he said that the ice maker uh, and the toilet and the refrigerator are three of the most common places uh, where leaks occur. And a leak detector like what we have here is like just right to catch those types of leaks um, because you can place it near the appliance and they're in a place where you know you know where the spills are going to happen. You know if the icebreaker the ice maker doesn't actually break, it's the you know the holes leading up to it, or it's same with the washing machine, which I didn't have listed there. So it's pretty easy to know where the leak is going to occur. Um, and uh, some pumps, uh, I already mentioned that earlier, where you can mount the whole body of the sensor outside of the sump pump and dangle the lead inside and then get a notification when it um, is about to overflow. And the basement door um, and the drain. So my boss, a couple of weeks ago, um, he had one of our leak sensors in his basement. And the feature that I didn't mention is that it actually has a a little beeper built into it. And he had his um, leak sensor attached to smart things, but he forgot to set up a notification for it. So he was about to go to bed, and his wife was saying, "Hey, do you hear um do you hear a beeping downstairs?" So he goes downstairs and looks. Um, he had a, the leak sensor was next to the basement door, and it was just pouring water inside. So he went outside, and there's um, the drain outside the basement door was clogged. So water was piling up outside and pouring back inside. So he just uh, unclogged the drain, and um, you know he it, it didn't it didn't re it wasn't really a big deal because it, it stayed in the laundry room. So um, you know it's a a fifty-dollar little investment is like super practical compared to a lot of other home automation, uh, you know, gadgets or knickknacks we can we can try to sell our sell the clients. Uh, the on-off plug. So, what's cool about our on-off plug? This can you know you plug in any device into it and you can turn it on and off, uh, and it can also monitor energy consumption. Uh, <clears throat> what's cool about it is that it only takes up a single outlet. Uh, so if you have a duplex, you can uh, you still use the other outlet um, without getting in the way. And since it's a plugged-in device, it also extends your range. So if uh, you know somebody wants some utility out of uh, you know some if you if you have to sell a, a, an extender to a device, but you, you think they could use some something like this, then you know you might as well just put this in there because they're going to interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it has overload protection built into it as well that you can set to any level you want. And uh, some uses you can um, put this. You can attach a lamp to this, and um, 
if a door sensor or a motion sensor detects any motion, it can automatically turn the device on. Um, somebody was asking if it has an indicator light. You're asking if you're if you're asking about the plug, it has a, a light in it that tell that's green when it's on, and then it's off when it's not on. So uh, I'm not sure if that's what you mean or you're talking about it when it's drawing current. Um, all right, cool. Uh, it does work with Alexa if you have a controller that works with Alexa. And I didn't see an answer from you, Dwight, on which controller you use for Z-Wave. Do you, if you use Z-Wave, then I can uh, figure out if, uh, if it can work with Alexa or not and get back to you. Um, so getting back to this, because this guy can tell you when or how much current is being drawn, uh, another thing that you can do with this guy is automate when the current goes above a certain level, you can have, the, uh, have your controller do something. Uh, so for example, if the current draws above, uh, you know, for example, one amp, then you can uh, dim the lights, which could be useful if you have a TV plugged into this, and uh, you can, you know, turn your TV down. Uh, t or when the TV turns on, you could uh, turn your lights out. Uh, another thing that I use this for personally, um, at home, I have like my entire entertainment system um, hooked up to this thing. So if I'm not there, the whole thing is it stays off in, in like one switch instead of um, having a bunch of different devices that uh, might be, you know, slightly awake, like the receiver, that might still eat energy for no reason. And I'm not sure about Omni supporting uh, Alexa, nor am I sure about Vero, so I'll have to get back to you. But uh, this guy is uh, supported inside Vera, so you should be able to uh, do whatever you can inside those systems through Alexa. It, it's going to be noted, uh, it's going to be recognized as a basic on-off switch in uh, any system. All right, motion sensor. So this is another one of my uh, favorite devices that we make. And I want to show you how this guy works on the webcam. So there's a, a, a base right here that you can screw into the wall. And it attaches to the wall. and the sensor actually attaches magnetically to the base. And then you can point it in any direction. And it has these flat spaces on it that lets you uh, place it on any like a shelf or a tabletop, if you'd like. So the mounting flexibility, I think, is one of the coolest parts about it. And um, the sensitivity area of it is, uh, is a cone. It's not, a, a, um, it's not like a, a weird shape like uh, some uh, traditional motion sensors uh, where it's straight along one side and then it, it goes all the way down to the floor where a customer or where you might think it's pointing to a, a, an area you want to monitor where it's but it, it ends up pointing to um, you know to the ceiling so this points has a, a 110 degree cone shaped coverage area just pointing straight out of the lens just like you'd expect like a camera to be so that makes um, installation a little bit um, easier, and let, you don't have to think about it as much. And it also has an ambient light sensor. Uh, so with the ambient light sensor, you can, um, you know, if the um, light level is above a certain level, you can set the set a, a, dimmer, a dimmer to a certain level, or if it's below, set it to another level. It's an interesting thing you can do with the light sensor. Um, somebody asked if the sensor is weather resistant, and it's not, unfortunately. Uh, if you live somewhere dry, 
you can put it outside if it doesn't rain, uh, you know, if it's not too cold, but it's not made to go outside. Um, I use a motion sensor personally in my living room where if nobody is, if there's no motion for a certain amount of time, then I automatically shut off my lights and uh, I shut off my entertainment system um, plug that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and that's actually saved me, I don't know how much energy it saved me, but it, it, I, I find myself, you know, just walking away to my room and getting distracted by something and then coming back the next day. And I was like, oh, wait, it's a good thing I had that automatically shut off. Uh, so it's really practical. And then I also have my hallway lights turn on automatically with the motion sensor, uh, which uh, is uh, kind of a, a bad thing because now I walk into my, around the office and I expect the light to turn on uh, and then I have to go back and turn it on by hand. So that's a word. Our siren is, I think, um, another one of our most useful devices. And what uh, really sets it apart are a couple things. Now, number one, uh, it's battery powered. So you don't have to plug it in, uh, and you're not restricted to where you can place it. Um, uh, you can even place it inside a drawer in an office on, in the other side of the off in the other side of the building, um, you know, in the other side of the home, uh, if they can't hear their alarm panel, for example. Uh, so they have there's a, a main siren function uh, where you know it's just a, a blaring siren, or there's also uh, secondary chimes that we offer, and the chimes, how that work is, um, it uses a particular command class and you can play 10 different uh, little sounds uh, that, uh, that you can use to notify you of uh, events in your home. Uh, so, you know, for example, you can play a chime if uh, somebody opens a door or um, there's motion detected. Uh, you can, uh, sirens are a pretty good um, intrusion aversion set piece because uh, if a, a loud noise starts going off then uh, people are going to be uh, you know scared and run away if they're trying to do something in your home and um, another thing you can do is if you have a leak sensor or something that uh, detects you know sort of emergency situations uh, you can have that in your bedroom and uh, it'll wake you up so you can try to do something about it uh, even if you're even if you're asleep, the water main shut off. Um, this is another a pretty unique device. Um, this guy fits on top of your existing water valve, and it installs. Um, you don't need a plumber. You just need a screwdriver to attach the um, hose clamps that you see. Uh, that you see right here onto the pipe. And this is a standard uh, valve, as you can see with the handle right here. Uh, so this guy uh, is 99 retail, uh, which I think is uh, kind of a feature in and of itself because every other device that we see out there, uh, you know, uh, you have to call in a plumber and it's going to, or it's going to be, you know, a, a few hundred dollars uh, to buy. And this fits on anything from half inch to one and a half inch. Um, uh, valves. So a few uses for this guy. Uh, you can close the valve uh, when you leave for work or for vacation. Uh, it's great for vacation homes or second homes um, because a lot of, you know, they're going to be leaving a lot, so they're going to be engaging with the valve quite often. Um, you can control hard to reach valves. Uh, so I I think uh, I think Rich was telling me he had uh, a valve somewhere in his house in the basement. He had a, a, a second line uh, run up to uh, up the upstairs so that he could shut off the valve in case there's a, a, a leak upstairs. Uh, so instead of doing that, you could just have this, you know, in the basement or in a crawl space and have it automatically shut off or shut off through your phone if something starts to happen. You want to shut it off, or if you want to do a repair and you want to shut it off. Uh, a couple people are asking some questions. Uh, it can be mounted in any direction, uh, vertical, horizontal, etc. 
And uh, somebody also asked if there's a battery. There is no battery for this, uh, but it is a 12-volt DC device. Um, I actually looked online, and I found some uh, inline 12-volt DC batteries that you could use. They're like less than 50 bucks. Um, I haven't tried them myself, so I can't vouch for whether or not it'll, it'll start a fire, uh, but you guys are free to, free to uh, experiment with that. Uh, so since it's only 100 bucks, you guys do have uh, a lot of headroom in uh, providing a, a you know, full-fledged solution to your customer. And I think a battery should not be that expensive. It does come with a 12 volt power supply, and uh, it has a it has a, a, a it has a pretty big um, power cord. It's like 10 feet long, and uh, the the battery uh, the power supply it only occupies a single outlet, so it should be good. And. Uh, which he's saying we can use an alarm battery, so that would be cool. Yeah. The Mouser um, is another device that really sets us apart. Um, it's actually the world's first smart mousetrap. And how this works is um, on the other side of this picture, um, there's a, 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 you know, a gap, a hole. Let me see if I can just close it up. So right here, the mouse walks in here, there's metal plates inside, and the metal plates get connected by the mouse, and it's electrocuted, and then you get a notification, so you can go clean out the mousetrap without having to look for it every day. Look at it, uh, look to see if you caught something every day. And um, right here is a bait compartment, so you can remove that place peanuts or um, popcorn or anything like that in there, place it into the trap, and then you're good to go. It's powered by four AA batteries, um, it, and it can last up to 50 zaps or uh, two years. There's an, a physical arm disarm button on the mouser, so you can... Um, uh, so when you get to it, you know for a fact if it's uh, armed or not, so you don't uh, accidentally shock yourself. So this is a, a device that I thought was kind of silly at first, but it actually has a, a lot of practical uses. Uh, so you can put it in attics, you know, other out of place air, out of the, you know, out of the uh, site areas, you know, behind appliances and stuff that might be a hassle to search regularly um, for mice. Uh, so it'll automatically let you know and then you can just go clean it out when necessary. Uh, you can also place this in restaurants and other uh, businesses um, because again you can hide it and then they don't have to they don't have to uh, dedicate personnel to searching out mice so they don't have a uh, rotting mice around. And uh, you can use this without Z-Wave. Uh, you just have to arm it, place it, and then uh, the LED, there's an LED that blinks uh, when the mouse is cut. So if you have a customer that uh, has mice but does not want to invest in a Z-Wave system, then you can get them this and maybe entice them to connect it so they can get notifications if their mice get caught. And finally, this is the Door Sensor Pro which is going to be coming out soon. It's not available quite yet. Uh, there's a few things that set this apart from the original door sensor. Number one, um, it has a 10-year battery life, and the battery is included, and it has a temperature sensor built into it, uh, which you can use to you know, uh, add to your climate control system. The magnet is super slim, and we made it a quarter of an inch uh, wide so that uh, you know the slit there that are on the casings next to the doors. It you can slide it right in that slit, so you can get as close to the uh, sensor as possible. Um, but even still, you can be up to an inch away from the sensor uh, for the magnet to still work. 
uh, it has S zero. It's it's S zero security enabled, so uh, you're not you don't have to worry about people messing around with your Z wave signals, and um, it's only twenty five dollars MSRP, uh, which is I think another great feature. And uh, that was all from me. And now I believe Richie's going to take over and um, show you guys how this works within uh, Wink uh, so you can see how it actually works in the system. And uh, before he starts, I want to say um, we're actually just about to be fully integrated with Wink. So what you see right now will change shortly, and it will actually be much more intuitive and uh, It'll be there will be none of the kind of uh, quirkiness in there. It'll be awesome, especially the siren. I think will be real good, uh, real soon in the future. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, first of all, can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you. All right, good enough. Okay. So, uh, what you can see on the camera there is just a couple of the Wink devices. We've got the door window sensor, the uh, siren. We have the water sensor and we have the valve set up. So I'm going to get into Wink here and then I'll show you a few things on the app. Bear with me one second while I share my screen. So let me start that over again then. If we go to the entry door sensor, again, pretty basic one, but if I open the, if I open the sensor, you'll see that it's open. And if we close it, you'll see that it's closed. A couple things we like on Wink here um, is you'll notice that you get kind of different headings based on uh, the status of the sensor. So all your open ones automatically go to the top. So if you're away from home and you just want to see what's going on, what's open, you know, you're not looking through a whole list. If there's two out of, say, 15 that are open, the two open ones will be at the top. So it's very easy to see. So we like that. If we go to the, um, to the sensors, the liquid sensors, that is, uh, I have one leak sensor on there. Um, I showed you the sensor earlier. Again, I have to really point out the really nice thing with the dome sensor that's different from the other brands is that in the box you have everything you need to do the remote sensor where you clamp it into that cradle and you've got the tethered sensor that you can stick in the sump hole or something like that. Um, so here's the leak sensor and again real simply if we just kind of get this wet we'll hear the beep and then you see the, sen the sensor comes in. Now also, if I go in and look at it, what's also really nice here, on this screen, I get uh, when it was last refreshed, its current status, and I also get the uh, battery level. Now if we keep moving down, you'll see the current activity. Um, you have a lot of base, you can see ours has stripped quite a bit, again it was in a trade show, um, but it's nice that you can get your history right in the device, and that goes for every device on the system. We'll go back a few more. Uh, if I go into, uh, let's see here, light devices, I actually have the plug-in. You can kind of see that, and I'm going to go in and edit this one. This is the dome plug-in. Uh, one thing we like, and this is really important to mention, if you manually turn the off with a button, the status is immediately updated in Wink. There's no waiting for the Z-Wave uh, refresh. Um, everything kind of comes out and, uh, immediately. So whatever we have there, you're going to get a real quick status update. Um, another nice thing we have is we can change the icons. Um, again, these are some kind of minor things, but at the end of the day, I mean, these are the things that kind of separate uh, different systems. So one thing we like with the Wink and the Dome together is you get really good performance and, and kind of some options you can choose to customize that system as, as best as you can for your customer. Um, one more thing I'd like to point out in the lights and power is uh, we'll talk about the um, the door. I'm sorry, the water valve. So you should still see that on the camera. And if I go in and say at the top here, you'll see water main. Um, again, just by holding it down, and we kind of went to edit. We we chose an icon that made the most sense. You know, it was really not a light bulb or an outlet, so we chose the sink to kind of show that it's water. But now, uh, keep an eye on your, uh, on your camera there. And we're actually turning that off right now. So now you kind of get an idea by looking at that on the camera. 
that you know what we're basically doing with the actuator here is kind of strapping down to the pipe and then the the arm on the motor from dome really just kind of grabs that quarter turn valve and moves it you know that uh, that quarter of a turn that needs to go to operate it so um, really neat uh, really neat product and again like Mike said uh, it's one where you don't really need a plumber to come in you need to hack a bunch of pipes apart it's easy just to kind of stick that on there so I'm gonna open that back up again So that's running. Then the last thing I want to show you is kind of to put a couple things together here. So we're going to go to what Wink calls a robot, which we would call just kind of an automation routine. And we're going to call this water valve. And it says if this robot detects something. So we'll go in there and we're going to say liquid sensors. First thing I would uh, point out is if you see at the top there, it says any liquid sensor. What's really cool here is if you have more than one water sensor, which, by the way, I would totally encourage. As somebody who's dealt with leaks in a house before uh, personally, I would say, you know, in the basement by the water heater, uh, under the kitchen sink, underneath the dishwasher, um, these are places where, you know, really makes sense to do this. And what's cool, again, in the wink setup here is just by uh, going into this robot and saying liquid sensors, right now, without doing anything else, it's looking at all your leak sensors. If you had 15 of them in there, it'd be watching all 15 without you having to write a separate rule for each of them. Now, I could go into any liquid sensor uh, if I had more than one. See, it's not really letting me tap that. If I had more than one, I would go in there and I could choose just the ones I want to. But by default, again, it's looking for all of them. So we're going to say detect liquid and we'll say save. Then we want to do something. Well, we're going to make something happen. First thing is uh, I want to go ahead and take that water main and turn it off. Again, on means it's open and water can flow. Off means it's closed. So we'll save that. And I think at the same time, I'm going to want to send myself a notification. Because uh, if I'm not home, I sure should get home and see what's going on. So we'll say done. We'll go back in and make sure it's refreshed. We do have that. Now I'm going to go back to the sensors. I'm going to go ahead and get this sensor wet again. And there you have it. And you can see how quick that is. The second that thing got the valve started closing, and I got a notification on my phone to say that uh, to say that we have a water leak. So. You know, that's another just really, really cool thing. Um, you know, within Wink, a couple things to point out. Um, when you use the, the uh, siren with Wink, and again, as Mike said, this is just right now. In the next uh, short period of time, look for this to be vastly in siren tone. So it's really easy. Um, if, and I'm not going to set it up now because it's really loud, but uh, we could do when the water leak uh, sensor is uh, tripped, we go ahead and sound the siren. And that'll go for a couple minutes, or you can go to the siren and turn it off. So we have that. Um, again, the plug-in works really well. The water valve works well, and I, and I want to point that out um, as kind of a, um, a general note on the water valve. That looks to any Z-Wave controller like a light switch. So the nice thing there is we talk about what hubs can, or what, what Z-Wave gateways support what dome sensors with the water valve. If your Z-Wave device supports light switches, which every Z-Wave hub does, uh, you're good to go to use this. That includes, uh, for the guys who've been asking, the Omni controllers. It's, again, it's going to show up there as a Z-Wave light, and you can then uh, kind of do what you need to do uh, through programming. So at that point, um, you know, that's a really versatile product that works with any Z-Wave device you have. For your guys who are doing uh, Elon, we're using the, uh, Vizia, uh, the, the Leviton VRCOP era. It works for that. There's just a lot we can do with it. So that's kind of a quick note on the valve. Um, Another quick note on Omni, and like I said, we'll send this out to everybody. Anything that's basically an output device, we're going to be able to support on Omni. Um, so the valve and the plug-in uh, appliance module primarily. Um, the Omni will not support the dome sensors, and that's not a dome issue or even a Z-Wave issue. The reason that's the case is that uh, Omni does not support any Z-Wave sensors through the VRCOP. It's just not in there. So you're not going to be able to do any kind of um, uh, like the door window sensor or the water sensor. It's just not uh, not part of how they've integrated that on the again on the Leviton Omni side. So you know favorite hubs for us when it comes to Dome would be uh, SmartThings is fantastic. Wink is looking really good. 
Vera is another good one. Uh, Favara we've had good experience with. Those are kind of your majors, um, and we're doing a lot of testing all the time. We've also done testing with uh, for the security installers that are around with us here. We've looked quite a bit at 2GIG, and we're pretty happy with what we see there. Again, water valve, um, new siren, those kind of things are, are working well for us too. So that's kind of the, uh, the short story, as it were, uh, on, um, on, the, on the sensors and how we do the demo here. Um, if there are any questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments and we'll get them answered for you.